Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Digital Painting Art Show. Today we're going to be doing a Velociraptor uh, with a hard brush and what are, what are my techniques for doing details. So let's get started. Okay, so it's really important that the first time that you're going to use this technique to learn, you use reference because uh, I've learned that people is really uh, gets really frustrated when they don't get the results on the first try even if it's, if it's the first try so use reference for the first try at least so um, as I was telling you we are not using any brush that has uh, opacity or shape dynamics um, doesn't have any doesn't have any transfer and it doesn't have other dynamics or 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 anything shape dynamics. It's like if you don't have a Wacom or you're using a mouse. Um, I don't recommend to use a mouse, but okay. Uh, for those that want to try it with a mouse, it's okay. So um, the way you control the opacity is with the numbers on the keyboard. That's the way we're going to control the opacity. Um, so you can change the opacity of the brush and the opacity of the layer with the letter H so with the letter H on the keyboard you can you can um, use the hand and when you push the numbers using the hand you change the, you change the opacity of the layer if you go back to B on the keyboard you go back to the brush and you control the opacity of the brush so right now I'm just putting some color and what I'm doing is just filling the colors and this you can go to image adjustments hue and saturation and you can um, basically change the color after you apply it um, same thing um, to start blending some of the colors I just create a new layer create a new layer and then you can change the opacity of, the, of that layer later um, you can, as I said before, you can go back with letter B um, after you change the opacity of the layer. So right now I'm just creating new layers and putting some colors, creating new layers and putting some colors, blending in with the edge. Notice that I don't have any blending yet, um, like soft blending, but we'll get to that in some, in few minutes. So I'm trying to match some of the colors. Obviously, um, it's really difficult to do it this way. Uh, I don't recommend to use the eyedropper at this point with the reference. Just look at the reference at one side if you have it, you have it print or you have it in another screen, whatever. Um, use as many layers as you can to change the color and to apply new colors. And one of the things that I'm going to ask you to do in this um, exercise is to have a variety of colors you have you gotta have a lot of colors um, don't stick with a little quantity of colors notice that in the eye I put it two colors then I'm going to change that and add a little bit more but the if you can if you notice now I'm starting to change the opacity on the brush I just change the opacity to to 30% 40% um, those are those are the the quantities of opacity that I, that I use. Everything is merged. All the layers are merged, and the liner and the and the color. And now what I'm doing is, is selecting the colors with the eyedropper. You can do that with the eye, or you can do it with the alt when you're using the the brush. And what what is going to happen is that you're going to start blending. So now I'm going to explain. In few seconds about this um, I copied the layer and then using the image then go to um, brightness and contrast I change it and then what I'm doing is erasing where I think the shadows will be um, it's a really easy way to get some um, light and dark colors um, and it gives you a lot of volume um, really easy so now I'm going to explain to you how to blend the colors um, with this kind of hard brush technique. So once you have two colors that you want to blend, what you have to do is just using the eyedropper and then changing the opacity to uh, it could be 40, it could be 50 uh, percent, 60 percent. I recommend 30 or 40 percent 
um, changing it with the numbers you can select you can select the darker or the lighter one and just add that a new level there then you're going to select that new color that you created um, and then you're going to apply it to one of the others other two and that's basically what you're going to do, be doing just selecting with the I or the alt when you're using the, the brush and you can start doing these kind of passes then you can you want to have to use less opacity let's say uh, 20 or 30 percent of opacity and what I, want, what I want you to do is repeat with little strokes really really little strokes and what you're going to to achieve here is some kind of randomness uh, on the on the brush and that's going to allow you uh, blend the colors this is going to take a lot of practice but because it's not something that is mechanic it's more like fluid it just happens it's not like um, there's a technique for it the technique is this and it's really really random and you're going to be using uh, your left hand using the eyedropper a lot and then changing to B a lot and at the beginning it's going to be really really um, difficult if you're not used to it but then it's going to be a lot easier and you're going to gain a lot of speed a lot of speed doing this um, not just for this for but for everything else that you're going to be doing later and that's basically the way I blend using this technique and the effect that you achieve with this kind of technique is really really uh, looks like a traditional painting at the end and it's just awesome the results so now that you know how this technique basically works I'm using a low um, amount of opacity in the in the brush and I'm starting to put some dark colors for the shadows between the wrinkles of the of the face of the head and the shadows of the of course the light um, I'm looking at the reference in my other screen um, obviously I try to resume the this video by by taking out few few minutes uh, but it's really boring so <laughs> it's okay that it jumps um, so I just wanted to see how it takes time it takes a lot of time um, this part because this is the most important part you need to get all the colors right first and notice how, that I have changes in color I have reds I have uh, um, purples I have green I have blue I have a lot of color different colors and that's what I want you to do I want you to put a really um, variety of colors now basing on the reference there is a blue light coming um, from the back it's probably the sky that is lighting this scene and I'm starting to put that with a really little um, brush size of the brush now I'm selecting everything all that is merged so now I'm selecting the areas that I think should have more light or that I need to have the lighter colors and I'm going to copy the layer and then put a lot of brightness then I copy that layer again and I put a little bit of color on them using the hue and saturation on the image adjustments on the menu and now what I got is like a, is the, the colors that I put bright uh, more brightness on uh, with a little bit of yellow color on it so it gives this cool warm this kind of warm um, effect it's really cool I have to put it a little bit down later uh, with the opacity of that of the layer because it was too bright but I get the colors now that I have the color everything is easier a little bit easier um, then selecting the colors that I the new colors that I got with the eyedropper it came out these little reds uh, these little greens uh, sorry these little green colors that look really really good and I'm just trying to select them with the with the eyedropper and then putting a lot more saturation with in on top of them um, I, I'm also putting a little bit of blue and um, blending with the with the green to have this kind of like a, um, 
how do I say that, like a blend between the warm colors and the cool colors and it gives a really nice effect okay so now um, we just have to concentrate on having basically what I'm doing is just looking at the reference now I'm putting this color really bright here because I want to see how it looks bright then change it with the with the layer opacity not the brush opacity but the layer I need you to get used to this kind of uh, workflow because it's really helpful when you're starting and it helps you understand more about color sometimes and what I'm what I'm doing now is just making a little bit of texture some some parts that's why it's so important looking at the picture because if you're doing this from memory like what you know about dinosaurs it's going to be kind of hard because there is a lot of things going on in the skin of these animals so just try to interpret interpret the reference and do it do it your way even it, this one doesn't look at all like the original um, it could feel like the same but it's not so now what I'm doing is selecting that layer and this part of the layer and putting more brightness on because I needed more light coming from the top and <clears throat> this is a really uh, easy way to put some some lighter values on the on the painting it really helps me out this kind of technique and it happens like it happens kind of like what it happens in real life which is more brightness a little bit more of um, saturation on the color and contrast so now I need more looking at the reference I noticed that I needed more dark in some areas too um, and that's basically um, you, what you should do just see the reference look what's different about it and just change it and it's going to take some time uh, and you should because uh, this is a really really slow process some people get really anxious and angry because they take about uh, two or three hours doing a painting that's like nothing nothing time in terms of painting because in the days before you had to spend like a lot of time so what I'm doing right now is a technique that I use that is really weird that is doing a grid to get the details on the painting in, a, in an amount and I'm putting a timer uh, that I will spend in each amount so if I divide the painting in four and I spend 10 minutes in each square I get 40 minutes and I put if I put more squares I do it in 160 minutes but at least the quality is kind of um, constant and I do this big uh, for two reasons one reason is to is to know how much time uh, until I finish the painting sometimes I do that and I instantly know okay if I spend 10, 10 minutes in each square and I can do 4 square is each day and the painting has 30 squares or something like that okay I can finish this painting in so many days or something like that it's, a, it's some kind of like a math that I do sometimes to finish my paintings when I, don't, when, I, when I don't have too much time because you know what happens is that you spend more time in some parts and less in others and you could do that, you could spend more time in some parts and not too much in others, but um, that's like for the background and stuff like that, that you really don't want the people to be as detailed. But um, for the stuff that I'm doing at the moment, I want everything detailed uh, because I want it to be polished and I really need to take the time painting it. Uh, and this, what this does is force you until I, that time having passed, um, I can get out of get out of that square. So sometimes you find uh, defects and detail that need to be repaired that you should uh, that you wouldn't have seen if you just paint the whole thing at the same time. So I find this technique really good. Um, it's a little bit too mechanic. It's not too fluid how it should be, but um, 
one thing that you should have in mind is that before doing this, your image should be like perfect in terms of lighting. It doesn't mean that you, you cannot do any change at the end, but you should, you should at least have something really solid in terms of lighting and to know what details um, do you need. Before jumping to this part of the process, I already had about 40 or 50 minutes, I think, of painting this dinosaur. And I did it with 10 minutes each, each square. And so that with 40 minutes more, I have something that I was happy with. Uh, but that's knowing how much time I could paint in, in, in um, wh how do I say that? Like in 10 minutes, I know I can do this amount of work. If you don't know how much it will take to you, what you can do is just paint one square and and put a timer to know how much. If it gets to 30 minutes or something with a result that you're happy in one square, okay, you have to repeat that same time in every square. And that way you, you should have a really solid um, painting at the end. So for example, what I was telling you about the changes, I needed to put, to, to put more dark on this, on this area. And I did that in the end and it's not too much trouble. So, <clears throat> I know it's a little bit crazy, um, and sometimes I do get out of the squares a little because I need to blend those squares. I don't want to look like that difference in the line between one square and the other. But um, at the end, you get something really nice going on, um, especially with this technique because the things don't, things don't look soft. So right now I noticed that I needed more contrast and I copy the layer again and put uh, more brightness on. Now I'm erasing when I, where, where I want more brightness and stuff like that. So this is the kind of stuff that I was telling you. Um, at the end, um, you shouldn't look at your painting like it's already, it's already done. You cannot do anything else on it. Of course you can. Here I'm doing a little bit more of light with the dodge tool. We, I don't normally use it, I don't recommend you to use it either. But at the end, if you think that you should have more light in some areas, you can use it. But just don't use it to get colors, because what you get is something really weird at the end. Um, right now I'm putting a little bit of hair, don't know why, and some details. So from far away it looks like it's more detailed than it really is. Um, what else? Okay, I'm going to do a little bit of background. It's basically a lot of a lot of stains uh, using the same color that I already have on the light of the skin. And then I'm going to go to filter and blur the thing out. And I get this kind of like a depth of field um, effect. So that's it. This is the Velociraptor from Jurassic Park. Alright guys, thank you very much for watching this episode, don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Facebook uh, to know everything that I do and all the images that I put, um, thank you very much for watching. Hey guys, I wanted to tell you about this uh, material that I put it together a few months ago, it's a guide of 20 pages and it comes with two videos, really long videos explaining everything that I did on this tutorial of how to paint a skin, it's, it comes with all the palette of colors, all the liners, all the textures that I use, I explain everything from occlusion, shadow, um, everything that I did on this tutorial to explain to you how to get that uh, really cool look on the on the female and male face. It also comes with how to paint um, beard, short beard for men. Um, really nice um, tutorial that I put it together a few months ago. If you want to get this, um, there is a link in the description. Um, uh, there's a Gumbroad and a Selfie for those who have PayPal and thank you very much if you can get it you will be helping me to achieve all the ideas that I that I have with the channel and thank you very much you have no idea how much we, you will be helping me if you get this material